It does go back to uh, the impact of social on tune-in, uh, and, and there's a lot of correlation, but causation is a little diffi more difficult to prove out. Um, uh, understanding how it keeps people tuned in longer on the linear side. On the digital side, we know what the click-throughs are. Um, we, we know what that is, and it's, it's very positive. Um, but I do think understanding, as I said, the big picture of how many people are actually engaged on the various platforms simultaneously uh, during a live television show is something we'd really like to understand. The, the biggest questions, and I, and I think a lot of people in my position would agree with me on this, is it's sometimes hard to measure whether what you're doing in social actually has an impact in whatever that end result for, is. For me, it's ratings. You know, if, if I'm not helping drive someone to watch one of our TV shows, I'm failing at my job. So for me, it's really about making sure that we're doing as much as we can to get that fan base excited, to get them engaged, and make them tune in. You know, with digital platforms and apps being able to watch anything you want at any time, it's really difficult to make someone tune in to a live TV broadcast. For me right now, I think a lot about measuring total audiences and uniting a total audience across multiple platforms. So what I mean by that is, you know, if I have fans on Facebook and followers on Twitter and followers on Instagram um, and Google Plus and Tumblr, I want to understand how many total people does this represent and what is each platform good for if in fact they do often represent the same people. And we've measured this and it does, um, but really unpacking how people behave differently across platforms and which platforms are great for new reach and not just added frequency. From a measurement perspective, my biggest question is always how the data relates to each other. So how does Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook all relate to each other versus the measurement of them as independent platforms? And how that correlation between those multiple social media platforms, including YouTube, can affect brand sentiment, brand attribution, lift, engagement, understanding, sales, because you can work in silos very easily in social media, focus on this is our Twitter strategy, this is our Instagram strategy, but your customer might know you through multiple touch points. So how does all that information relate to each other and correlate into actions taken by your customers? Understanding which voices, and this could be a brand voice or an individual voice, which voices actually get activated more, not just shared, but which ones really have momentum. Um, because sharing can be very passive, and the, I think understanding which voices actually move people to act and behave in a certain way would be really fantastic. There are a lot of measurement companies that are looking at repins and who the who the seed person is that generates, you know, for example, pins and then repins and then re repins, et cetera. I think there are still questions about um, who exactly those people are. It's not always the people who have the most followers. Sometimes you, we're in an environment where a lot of people can acquire a lot of followers, but they're not the most engaged. So who those people really are, I think, are is a very interesting thing to find out. And I don't think we've quite identified who they are yet.